Movie review, movie review. It's time for a movie review, movie review. Say what's up. Hey everybody, welcome back to another movie review with BFD. That's right, today BFD stands for boy. Flip this. We're still working on the channel name. Don't worry about it. Anyways, today I just saw the movie The Marvels and well, <laughs> As a white male, I feel I am best situated to review this movie. So in terms of first thoughts, I think the best way to summarize this movie is it's kind of meh, but at least it's not cringe. This movie is not as bad and boring as Ant-Man 3, and it is not as cringe and bad as Thor 4. And so because of that, I gotta say, if you're a fan of the MCU, you'll probably like this. If you're a fan of good movies, yeah, maybe maybe wait for this one to come out on streaming. So the question obviously becomes, well, <laughs> Kyle, why is that? I'm so glad you asked. Let's talk about it. The biggest problem with this movie is that the characters make decisions that do not make any sense whatsoever. Now, normally, I'm not really a big stickler for plot holes and things like that. I, they don't bother me as much as not as as long as they are not like glaring issues in the film. If a plot hole happens, whatever, man, I don't care. However, when your entire film is based around multiple plot contrivances and things that just do not make sense, well, they start to stack up and they stack up real fast. Basic plot summary of this film the Marvel women, the, the the ones on the posters, all their powers are swapping and everything because the bad uh, person of the film, she wants the other like, uh, she wants the other wristband uh, that Kamala has uh, to basically mess with the jumping system that we've seen in the Guardians movies uh, to be able to transport the things that her dying planet needs to survive from other planets that are doing really well and that Captain Marvel happens to like. And basically they take her out and then they're able to save all the jump points and everything and then Captain Marvel's able to bring the planet back to life at the very end. That's basic plot summary just so you understand kind of generally what I'm talking about. So the first major problem that we have here in terms of plot contrivances is that the planet of the Krees, that's the race of uh, people where the bad guy's coming from, is dying and there's no reason that it should be dying. Now, I understand that they explain, well, they re they used up all their resources during a civil war after Captain Marvel destroyed the Supreme Intelligence. That's great. How many of those resources were the sun? Yeah, in this movie, the sun is dying, but it's dying slowly and yet somehow it died over the course of 30 years. And for some reason, that's just never really addressed. Okay, guys, all right, Civil War's over. Oh my God, what? Oh no, we used too much solar power. We used all the solar power, so now the sun's dying. That, that was basically a conversation that happened off screen. It was a deleted scene, don't worry about it. So anyways, we just have to accept that the sun is dying because whatever reasons, but also they don't have breathable air on the planet and there's apparently no water. At the very least, there are no oceans. Now you may be asking yourself, well, boy, if I lived on a planet with no breathable air, absolutely no water, and the sun was no longer giving light, like, or heat for that matter, and I also have access to spaceships that can go anywhere in the galaxy, I think you should leave. Baby, 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 baby. But of course they don't do that because you see, the home world that they have there is very, very important and it's special to them. And we know this because I'm telling you now, like, I get it. Like, I wouldn't want to leave Earth. You know, there's a lot of history here on the planet and everything. But I'm going to be honest, if the sun disappeared and I had the ability to go to any other planet, I'd probably just go to any other planet, like literally any other planet that could habitate life. Habitate? Habitat? Is that, is habitate a word? Look it up. So that's really weird. And, uh... As far as I'm aware, um, they just kill these other planets entirely by taking all of their air or all of their oceans and bringing it back to their own planet, which you think would have some sort of disastrous consequence on both planets, but 
not the very least, the one that they are trying to save, if you automatically just instantaneously or damn close to instantaneously introduce breathable air and oceans onto a completely different planet, you think something might happen, but uh, you know, anyways. So that to me is the biggest problem. It's the entire foundation of the villain's ability to want to act at all in this film. Again, it doesn't make sense. Also, a weird plot contrivance is that the villain is actually alive, because when Captain Marvel came in to destroy the Supreme Intelligence, we see her punch blast these two other guards, but then the bad guy comes up before she's the bad guy, and she goes, uh, I'm gonna fight Captain Marvel, and instead of blasting her, probably killing her, she blasts the roof above her to drop some rubble that just kind of pins her down for a little bit. Why? Oh, that's right, because we need her to be the villain later. <laughs> and we gotta give her some personal attachment to Captain Marvel, and uh, we can't figure out any way to do that. At, you know, She'd only kill her entire planet. So yeah, that's, that's also kind of dumb. There's other weird things like the fact that they play uh, the uh, memory song from Cats while a bunch of the flurers or whatever the hell they're called uh, start eating all the people on the ship in order to transport them off. Don't worry about it, it's, it's not super important. But they play, they, yeah, they play the memory song from Cats, which is only played because it's from the musical Cats and there's a bunch of cats on screen. It's like, like I get it, but it's just like, and it, hey, I get it, it's a good song. And I get it, it's a funny scene. But there's no reason to pair it together. It's just like, oh, it's from Cats, play that song. Like, okay, it doesn't have any thematic reason to be playing during that scene. There's also just a lot of scenes that happen just to be kind of goofy, but they don't explore character or really create any sort of drama or tension over the course of the movie. This movie is just one of those films where you just kind of watch it and you're like, yeah, these events are happening. That one reaction from Kamala was pretty funny. Well, anyways, movie's over, time to go. Uh, for instance, when they go to the, uh, the ocean planet, which apparently has 99.6 something percent ocean, and yet as soon as they arrive, I see a landmass on the planet that is bigger than, I would, I would argue that it's at least 1% of the planet. So that was just a wrong statistic, but that's neither here nor there. They go to the planet where all the sing-songy people are, and you think, oh, okay, well they can't communicate in any way other than music. Okay, well that, that might be difficult to explain what's going on because you know, Kamala will probably be all down to sing, but you know, Captain Marvel and Monica, maybe they don't want to sing. Maybe they feel like they can't really express themselves in any vulnerable light around each other because, you know, they're kind of dealing with this problem between each other. No, there's no issue there. No, Captain Marvel starts singing and they're like, oh, that's funny. And then she's like, all right, we're done singing now. Anyways, you can talk to me, right? And the prince is like, oh yeah, I can talk. So it's like, why the fuck did we do that? <laughs> Nothing happens. He doesn't refuse their request. At least in the Mario movie, the Donkey Kong people were like, no, I'm not going to help you. It's like, yeah, like the whole thing was just done to be kind of fun and reference Smash Bros or Donkey Kong original game. One or the other. I can't remember now. But at least there was kind of a plot reason for them being there. And, at least, and it also pushes Mario's character arc along. But you know what? Let's get off the plot. Let's talk about the characters. All right, best character hands down, I guarantee you're gonna see this in almost every movie review is Kamala Khan. I watched the Miss Marvel TV show and I remember thinking it was fine. I liked the first episode or two. I thought they were really entertaining. I thought that they worked really well visually to present how the character was. And then it became kind of bland at the very end, but she's the best part of this movie. She's incredibly funny. She's very charming. Um, she keeps my interest alive because Again, she's actually doing something and having a character or just a personality. <laughs> Side note, uh, Captain Marvel um, is a completely different character in this movie. If you didn't like her in Captain Marvel and Avengers Endgame, then guess what? She's different now. Yeah, it's super weird. It's not even like a direction issue. It's literally that she is a completely, fundamentally a different person than she was in the first film. Um, we actually see some flashbacks at the very beginning to how she was in the first film, and and it's so jarring. Like she's, she is a she's an actual person in the sense that she's not a stoic dick. But anyways, the the main kind of strife I guess in the film is between those two characters and the fact that uh, Captain Marvel wasn't there for Monica when her mom died. 
I hate this. This is the same thing that Cassie Lang said to Scott Lang and Ant-Man and Quantumania. It's like, hey, when you're off saving the world, why aren't you here with me? Oh, you just saved the world? Why are you writing a book and trying to take some time to be a parent? Why aren't you saving the homeless people from being homeless? I mean, what have you done with your life other than save the world at least three times before that movie happened? I hate this so much. Captain Marvel is off saving the entire galaxy multiple times, and you have the audacity to be mad at her for not consoling you when your mom died? She's busy. That'd be like if you were friends with the President of the United States, and, and he was like, I consider you my family because we're just so darn close. And then a war breaks out, and in that war, your mom dies. And then the President of the United States, while handling the military operations of this war, does not personally come down to you and spend time holding you because your mom died. Imagine if you had the audacity to be mad at him for not coming and making you feel better. There are bigger things happening here than me and you. I, I hate that so much. It's so lazy. It's manufactured tension. And the biggest problem with this is that they don't even commit to it. It's a huge, like, kind of issue, unspoken issue between them at the beginning of the movie. And then they have, like, a semi heart to heart talk kind of at the end of Act One, beginning of Act Two. And that's it. It's never really brought up anymore. They're totally fine around each other. Captain Marvel says, I'm sorry. I, I, I should have been there. You know, I was busy. And then Monica's like, Yeah, well, you know, I know you're busy. I get it. But, you know, I'm still a bit upset, but, you know, we'll move on. And that's it. That's all the change in their relationship that we get. It's not really used later on. And at that point, that plot line is completely forgotten about. It's just, it's, it's lazy and it makes you feel like you went through something if you're not thinking about it at all. And maybe that's the problem with current MCU. And I know everybody and their mom is harping on, ah, MCU is bad now. Yes, it is. And I understand. Everybody's like, ah, you know, it's just kind of, you know, it's lazy writing. Oh, it's kind of the same, same. Yes, it is. And I hate to be the bearer of news you've already gotten a hundred times before. But most of that isn't really changed here. It still does the, the classic, uh, oh, we're going to keep you invested by making you point at the screen and saying, I know that. I've seen that before. It's like, oh boy, I, I, that, that's something new. Oh, now I got to keep watching. But it's like, why do we keep watching these things expecting anything interesting? Because all it does is shove things in your face that you recognize and then does nothing interesting with it. And then you're like, oh, but they tease doing something exactly the same of what I'm disappointed with in the future. Maybe that'll be good. Well, you know, maybe it's time to say no. It's probably not going to be good. And look, you know, I hate to end the video on a downer like that. But I left the theater thinking, well, I have my problems with it. But at the end of the day, like, it wasn't that bad. There's some comedic moments in it. Again, Kamala Khan, uh, I don't know the actress's name. She steals the show. There were, there were some kind of funny bits in there. Um, I thought some of the action with them switching between each other looked pretty good. You know, not, it's, not, it's not all up to snuff, but, you know, it's, it's fine for what it is. And uh, other than the fact that Nick Fury is kind of a beta male now, then, you know, like, it's all fine. Like, it's, it, it, it works. Howdy ho, BFDers, and welcome to my review of the Scott Pilgrim vs. the World spinoff series of Envy Adams, or Nat, whichever one you want to call her. I walked into this movie thinking that it would be just another generic Marvel movie. And guess what? It was. But this time, that's okay, because had a good time. There was humor and a bit of heart and a weird planet that people could only communicate through singing on. And honestly, kind of wanted a little bit more of that. The Marvels is not a game changer, but at least it wasn't boring. Uh, the acting could have been better, the script could have been better, the CGI could have been better, but hey, at least it wasn't Secret Invasion. Although it kind of is, 
thing. The Marvels doesn't really care about the greater MCU plot as a whole, uh, for the most part, which I found was refreshing. But here's what I liked. Kamala and pretty much everything she touched was great. I loved the dynamic she and her family had. Unlike Blue Beetle, where it was all about family, uh, this wasn't, and yet it had more heartfelt moments than Blue Beetle did. I loved the fight scene near the beginning where the whole con crew was fighting these random baddies and screaming and panicking, uh, mom smashing these guys, dad smashing those guys, uh, brother smashing them guys, and, and then later uh, dad teaching the aliens about economics was cool. The way they used the switching mechanic was nice and a neat gimmick and actually had some part to play instead of just being something that existed, even though in the final moments it didn't really have anything to do uh, with the climax. Some of the combat was wicked. Again, they pretty neatly nailed down the switching mechanic, uh, but it was very inconsistent because they wouldn't ever switch with a pattern uh, just sort of when they needed to, sort of like how the spice in Dune was just whatever it needed to be, which was supposed to come out this past weekend, but instead we got the Marvels. Goose and the Flurgle subplot was completely unnecessary, but I did like its randomness. It, it was definitely a deus ex moment, and it makes me wonder like how Goose even had children unless he, uh, Nice. The Aladanians or Atlanteans or whatever they're called subplot and the whole planet where they were singing and dancing, I thought that was wacky and hilarious. And that one guy, Riz. Also, uh, Brie Larson when she was wearing that dress. Uh, what I did not like, plot was simple. Not every film needs to be super complex, but the villain Deborah, or Darwin, whatever her name was, uh, yeah, she was just Ronin too. And she even had his hammer, but she just wasn't as powerful. Her motivations were solid, but there was nothing that really fluctuated with her plot or emotional arc. I appreciate that she just didn't switch to a good guy at the end, although it sucks that she kind of just died. I will say though, they had me in the first half when she got stabbed, I thought that they were gonna do it. But luckily she just said, fuck it, and then moved on. The music was boring and bland and again generic, except for the Alabama, Atlanta scene, the, the sing-song scene, I love that. Whatever Nick Fury was wearing, like sort of like a loose buttoned up collar, he kind of looked like a zombie apocalypse survivor or something. The emotional arc that was attempted between Monica and Carol was just really weak, uh, even though I think that that was supposed to be our, our main emotional stake throughout the film. Speaking of which, they gave Captain Marvel the Thor treatment and made her like this super flaccid whiny crybaby uh, when she has always been like this rock hard woman, which hey, Women can be rock hard and they can be stone cold killers they want. Uh, no judgment, but not seeing like that transition, her going from like, Dana thing got nothing on me to like, I killed everyone, I'm so sorry. That threw me off just a little bit. The weird things that I've been talking about in the movie, I enjoyed them, but they did give me tonal whiplash. So my neck is sore from watching this movie. Uh, yeah, so that's what I think about the Marvels. Uh, pretty forgettable, but at least I enjoyed my time in the theater. Oh, and I have to rate it. Uh, Kyle and I are gonna disagree on this one pretty hard, uh, but I'm gonna give it a solid six out of 10. Hey, and we're back to the same score that I give everything all the time. Oh, also, I saw it in IMAX 3D, which was honestly super cool. I didn't expect to like it as much as I did, and I will be doing that more often. Um, also, Brie Larson in this movie, she looked good. I just wanna emphasize that. Hey, Brie Larson, if you're out there watching, 
DFD. Hit me up. What's up? <laughs> but again, my thoughts right now are basically just complacency. It's just I, I don't feel anything really that strongly about the MCU writ large or this movie. I'm never, after uploading this video, I will probably never think about this movie again. I will probably infer in critiques of other movies down the road, if they have similar problems to this movie, I will not be able to recall the problems of this movie because I won't remember anything that I've seen. And you know, that, that that's just disappointing. You know, you I, I went and saw this on IMAX. You know, I, I wanna, I wanna get a big old impression on my eyeballs and my brain balls. But you're just not gonna find that here. Again, it's fine. At least it's not cringe. Also, side note, it's super weird that Captain Marvel has any problem fighting the chick with the hammer thing that the bad guy from the first Guardians movie has. But it looks like it has the power stone in it. But as far as I remember, the last time we've seen an Infinity Stone was on Tony Stark's corpse. And yet somehow, someway, there's an Infinity Stone in it. And the question is, well, why is there an Infinity Stone in there? How did that get there? That's never explained. And if there's not one in there, how is that doing any damage on Captain Marvel at all? At the end of the film, she flies into a dead sun, shoots energy at it to start a nuclear fusion reaction, and then flies out of the sun that has now become fully powerful. She is able to withstand the gravitational force of probably the core of the sun, and then the heat as well. And she's not even phased at all on it. So how in the hell is this 40 pound woman with a hammer with either an infinity stone in it or no infinity stone in it, putting any sort of like damage on her at all? So it's super weird, man. It's like, I can't take your stake seriously if the woman flies through ships and the sun without being phased. I didn't mean to get so heated about that. I just, that was the dumbest way to end the movie. I, I, I thought she was just gonna blast it from afar, but she flew into the sun. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? That's, that shouldn't be possible. But anyways, I'm gonna leave it there, guys. Final rating on the movie, five out of 10. Well, hey everybody, I hope you liked this video. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Marvels? Um, please comment below if you haven't seen it, you don't have to say anything. You can still comment below because the engagement is nice. But again, if you haven't seen it, I, I don't know what you're doing commenting about it. But hey, leave a like, subscribe, do, do all those things. And hey, yeah, we'll probably see you back here for the Napoleon review. Um, so I expect that one to be pretty good. So hopefully we'll have a more positive review next time. In the meantime, I've been Kyle and I still am. And uh, I'll see you. Uh, bye. See you later.